waiting on uh, Shane. You're going to get us some samples or other ideas from other municipalities. Uh, yeah, and uh, and Jeff and I um, will be getting together here in the next okay. couple of weeks. Just want to move it along. Home inspections, illegal hookups. Uh, Jeff, you said you're going to have a report. You would ask me how many were left. And um, basically, we have about six or seven hundred homes left to do. And mainly, um, they are the middle corridor of uh, Chestnut Street and a little bit on the south side. Central. Um, otherwise, we have to do the things like that. Thank you. I'm anticipating maybe this year, uh, maybe into next year, a little bit. Uh, kind of depends. So it might be wrapped up by 2013. Yeah, I'm thinking. I, I, I'm thinking that we'll have all inspections completed by. I, I would say that mid summer or maybe a little bit longer, 2013. And at some point, that would go on a report to the state the, or the federal government that the reports that we're required to do. Right. Okay. And I don't know once that happens if that's something that how that report continues. Um, once we've reached that, I imagine we might have to do an annual report on board, uh, of, our, uh, of our main stuff, like our, our I, I projects that we go off and get into. That, that, okay. that, that graph that we got today, we emailed the uh, sewer. Yes. It was yeah. good. It was very good in March. Yeah. Well, we haven't had rain or snow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's very really good. It's even yeah. way yeah. pretty under. So we're at 1.1 1. 1 average. But last year, it was amazing how it peaked. Yeah. You know, after you separate all these houses off, you're still going to have. But we've got water the flow. I, I just want to help with that. Yeah, yeah. Because it's we'll find help with roots, it, problems, and uh, uh, broken means or whatever. It's an obvious issue. It's going to be perpetual. Yeah. No more. Okay. Um, South Second Street Reservoir is just probably the same situation, right? We're just. Yeah, we, uh, we, we need to. Develop some sort of a plan for that, and I'm not exactly sure what that is. Okay. That's long term, yeah. basically. Cintas? We're waiting on a final report from them, hopefully, it will be in there. Okay. 226 Pine Street, Ms. Joan Wildman, has she, last meeting we were talking about you notifying her about you found something down further that maybe was the cause of the problem? And I, I. Or did you send a letter? Somebody was sending a letter. No the letter phone. was sent. I was going to try to contact her personally. Okay. And I went by her home and she wasn't there and I'll continue to try to reach her. Um, essentially we replaced that section of sewer line on Mulberry, yeah. which was um, cracked and settled. And we also found a growth, and I really what was puzzling about this was this was a problem that had not been there for a number of years. It's been three years, maybe a little longer that this problem started. Um, we did a lot of cutting down below, and we found a large growth that possibly could have been the problem. Or all of it combined. Yeah, so I'm thinking that I'm optimistic that we solved this problem. Well, can, yeah, can you notify her what was done up to this yeah. point? Yeah. And then next meeting, if you told me you notify her, I'll remove yeah. this from the yeah. agenda, yeah. hopefully satisfying her yeah. appeal. South 10th Street Culvert, we were waiting on an info from Hanover. Brad, I gave Brad Yaus the go ahead to contact to start their work, uh, uh, he is going to first assess the appropriate size, the possibility to reduce the size, thereby minimizing the cost, mm -hmm. and then he will provide us with a, a cost estimate that we use for the purposes for next year. Okay. So I've been discussing with him that he's still working. Okay. Um, and that's not an emergency type thing. That's this is just another regular routine we got to get it taken care of, but in the next couple of years. Uh, Landis cir Circle is a uh, free grade that we made through winter time. It's not going to be an issue now. Um, it's not, but I did go by and look at it. And, you know, it's not going to. The, the problem is, is that it, with the water coming out there until that stops, the re regrading is not going to change. There's plenty of slope there. It's uh, going to persist as it freezes. It's going to continue to build up. So I'm not quite sure what the answer is there. I think it's just going to be a couple spots of going to have to be there's two more gentlemen at this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just the agenda. Did you make your presentation? Not yet. Not yet. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if I I remember the copy point I realized. It made four. I was like, oh, I need one more. So I hit it. But it made four more. Because I didn't change the number. Oh, the reporter needs an agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. You're one short. Maybe one else. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, with old business being taken care of, do you have any new business before I go to John's? Um, I just wanted to touch base with you, and this was something I think I spoke to you about yesterday. Back in December, a contractor repaired the sewer line at 913 Buttonwood. Oh, yes. In that process, yeah, I know, yeah. um, he damaged the sewer ladder at 972. There was a lot of commotion back and forth. Public Works Department finally went back in there, excavated the sewer line, and made the repair. Right. There was all kinds of claims that the homeowner that, that had the service line to be repaired was putting their cost together. Um, and I was directed by the former solicitor to send the bill to the homeowner so that he could include it with his um, other bills that he was going to be presenting to this plumber. Um, since that time, I've been told that we probably should have done things differently, but coincidentally what has happened is, and I have copies, I don't know, do you guys have? Um, I got a letter the other day from the homeowner that I gave the bill to, uh, a letter to me, and kind of asking us to meet with the, the utility contractor to discuss the bill. Essentially, our labor to repair that was about $2,240. Um, the guy had broken his sewer lateral. Uh, his home had flooded. Um, there was just, he had some plumber expense to, to see what was going on. And this, this persisted for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that this is, we already have discussed this with the solicitor, and I believe that this is an issue that should be passed along to the solicitor. Okay, so you're looking for us to recommend the council to uh, have a solicitor file a claim or send a letter? I'm just basically informing you about this. The solicitor already has this as okay. a task. I'm just letting you know kind of where we're at. We just coincidentally got this letter from the homeowner and I'm planning on passing it along. Did you see it? In other Shane, at this point, you know how we have said we always ask the, we always ask for uh, approval from council for the uh, solicitor to move forward with action. Yeah. Is this something we need to have a recommendation to council to uh, have you, him do? You know what I would do is, um, I was going to forward him this, this right now. I think I said this with a bunch of other stuff the other day. Here, here's what I think we should do, uh, Mr. Lagerberg, is let him read over this letter, and I'll let him know um, that, because it's a legal matter, that at the next council meeting, you may speak in executive session about him going forward with things that uh, he should be prepared to talk to you as far as whether or not we should recommend an action. Okay. Yeah. So that so that way, you know, you don't want to have him go forward with something without well, and without the understanding time, I don't, the issue. I don't want to put yeah. too much. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, and the no purpose for me bringing this to your attention is just to give me an update on the problem. Okay. Uh, because of this latest development, so. All right. Uh, with that being said, uh, John, you're next. I'll bring you up here. I'm going to read your letter into the record. Okay. Um, everybody, you got copies of what uh, John presented to me. Dear editor, this is something I went to the newspaper. Yeah, you can sit up here, John. Uh, this letter is to inform you that I, along with other property owners, will be making a presentation to the Public Works Committee Thursday, April 5th. 3 p.m. in the Municipal Council Chambers to propose that the multi-unit service charge be eliminated. This charge is an extra fee added to the water bill landlords pay on behalf of their tenants. This fee is a discriminatory and unfair assessment placed solely on a certain class of people, example, apartment residents. I have dis discussed this with other property owners and have a petition signed by many of them to be presented to the committee. There are many apartments that provide affordable living for rural residents such as the Meadows, the Chestnut Commons, the Indian Creek, uh, Lehigh Valley Housing High Rise, and many smaller unit, multi-unit apartment houses throughout Emmaus. The 2010 census shows there are approximately 2,000 apartment units within the borough, and most of them have this extra $8 fee added to their water bill each quarter, totaling $32 per unit per year. Uh, this uh, discriminatory fee should be eliminated and apartment residents should receive equal treatment under the law. Um, there is also attached a petition to redress the multi-unit service charge. We, the undersigned, as managers or owners of apartment buildings, 
Within the borough, we may I suggest that may as borough council concerning the multi-unit service charge added to the base Emmaus water and sewer bill. We feel this is an overcharge placed on a specific segment of the Emmaus population to renter. As such, we petitioners ask that Emmaus Borough Council rescind this grievance immediately or by its next regularly, regularly scheduled council meeting. It's signed by approximately uh, 15, 20 signatures of, uh, looks like, uh, either and I have 17. And, and how many units? How many units they they currently have attached? After that is a copy of uh, I'm assuming what Jeff presented to you. The Emmaus water rates. Water rates, uh, and then uh, and then a comparable water rates I'll say for LCA and McCundy. I just picked two. Okay. Just for. Sure. And then attached uh, after that is a uh, four page, and I'll let you explain it to me. Okay. This, oh, it is five, okay. Yeah. First page just has a picture of uh, basically one house, one building, supplied by the borough water system going through a water meter, and it just has a few questions on it. And then the uh, first one is, will the water meter read all the water used within this building? I guess I need the answer. Okay, yes it would. Will it read all the water used no matter how many people use this within this building? Yes. Okay. Does the mayor sneak meter and bill for all the water now used in yep. the town? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's demonstration purposes, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Next page is uh, basically the same thing, but what it shows is there's the water meter, and then if you take that, so say keep that main water meter in and split it in two, because this is like a two-unit apartment or whatever, any kind of a unit that would have two water meters because there's two other built uses in it. Will water meter number one read all the water used within the building? Yep. Okay. Will water meters two and three total the water reading of meter number one? Yeah, but is that typically how it's set up, Jeff? Yeah. No. It's no, not it's just not system. set up like this at all. Okay. But would that happen? Well, you wouldn't set it up like that, so... I'm not asking that. I'm just asking will meters one or two and three Everything. total read the same as yeah. one meter? Okay. Yeah, and all of that. Sure. Not much difference. Well, theoretically, it should, yes. Yep. And then this shows another one with basically the same thing as the first one that shows maybe nine. There's actually eight, eight separate water meters. And the answer eight. is so yes. Okay, so they would all read the same. And then it says, if yes to all these, then why are... <coughs> Why use more than one meter if it isn't necessary? All it does is add redundancy, more meters to purchase, install, maintain, read, fill, and for why? When already, one meter works fine. And that's basically the whole argument right there. Okay. And this one is meter. This, is this the same argument you brought last this time is, you explained is, everything? Well, I didn't get to explain it. I got shut down. Well, right, it, right that's, not true. Uh, that's not true. That's not true. Right, you want to see? I have the DVD here. We can watch. Keep going. Right, okay. Yeah. We're not going to argue over that. Okay. But okay, that was when Craig Neely was here. Well, he's not. So we're moving on. Yep. Let's move on. So we would agree that one meter, even if you take the Colonial Crest, Indian Creek, any of them, okay, one meter goes into a building. It reads all the water that's used. Mm -hmm. All the people that are in there, I don't care how many they are or who they are, are paying for all the water they use. Right. Okay. Then why do we add eight dollars to each unit on top of that? Do you think that for the same amount of water that apartments are using as a resident uses, they should get discounts on the water? It's not a discount. They're paying. Absolutely, their... is a discount. Explain that, please, Jeff. Um. 
Right, I have an example. It's actually cheaper. Here. The only person that pays more for the extra dollar, eight dollars, is a two unit. Anything more than two units, you're actually getting a reduced rate water rate compared to any resident in the borough. And Jeff will show you in this diagram. And we did this already. And we went through this yes, before, John. Yes, you did. Okay. If you look at the first page, um, and this is where 10 apartments are being served by one meter. And just so making, just, else. I have no copies for everybody. I have one additional copy. That's all I have. Can you please get more made so everybody can have? Um, follow me. Oh, we're going over so much. We got it, okay? We're okay. Here. Thank you. Jeff will just give me a copy later on. You guys can go ahead and take that copy too. That way you can share it right there. Part of the, well first of all, this, this, was a, this was a decision the council made when we were looking at um, adjusting rates. And in the effort to settle in on a certain rate, they uh, elected to institute the multi-unit service fee, was a, which was attempted to equalize the cost of water to all the different residents. And on this first page, what it shows is that each one of those squares represents an apartment. And if they're served by one meter, then that means that that meter measures 100,000 gallons in a quarter. And the tier structure for the water rate is 0 to 40,000 is a rate. Anything above that drops to a much lower rate. So right off the bat, with the one meter and the 10 apartments, those 10 units are paying less for water. Because they're using more than 100,000. Because they're losing, using more than 40,000. 40, okay. So it's a very simple calculation. What this is meant to do is to say, okay, if you took the cost of this meter and assuming that each one of these apartments used 10,000 gallons, their monthly bill would be 2198. As opposed to the home, that has a one meter using 10,000 gallons, their bill is 3305. So it was simply a mathematical gyration that was meant to try to equalize saying that if you add eight dollars to that 2198, the apartment that's using 10,000 gallons is now paying 2998 for the same amount of water per apartment, and the, and the homeowner is paying 3305. So what's the discount? And so what that, that for a discount of the homeowner for the apartment is still paying more four dollars uh, less for the exact same right? amount of water. Why? Because so, you're charged for the meter. So there is no charge. We just said we're paying by meter and volume. Right. And you agree that all the volume is paid for and everybody's pay I pay a meter charge even for my apartments. There's only one, that's just how it is. But yeah. I'm paying for the volume. Okay. John, my, my question to you though is looking at his diagram and assuming he's accurate, where's, what? where's the problem? You're paying less. That, that, I'm it's asking you. How is it, how is it paying, paying less? less? It's only the people. Because mm -hmm. you can no, have seven right. people living in the house. And I can have one person. Okay. So what's the difference? All right. I'll, I'll also, also mention the difference of the size of the water. But if the size of the size of the pipe going in is also larger for apartment complexes versus a residential. Also, they pay their meter fee accordingly. If you look at this diagram on the front page, I assume that the bill that the apartment was using a one inch meter one to one and a quarter inch meter, so this has a charge of $33.86 for the one inch meter, as opposed to a home meter, which only charges $13.55 because it's a five inch three quarter. The real crux on this particular comparison is the fact that these apartments are getting the next tier in the water rate, which was not the original intention that's for one structure that's taking that, not for 10 structures operating under the same roof. That's why council decided to do that. And so as you look through these examples, I, I basically did three of them. The 10, the 10 unit one is basically very simple. Uh, you basically for the same amount of water, we just assumed 10,000 gallons for the, for the example. Each apartment is paying 21.98 as opposed to the resident who's paying 33.05. You add the eight bucks, it's 29 dollars to thirty-three oh five. That's for ten apartments. If you look at four, because of the volume discount, and also because but of so the you're taking the volume discount away. So if you just charge them all the same amount, 
everybody got the same amount and you didn't have the meter to read, then everybody would pay the exact same amount, which would lower the cost of the homeowners and raise the cost of the, um, the other one, uh, the apartment people a little bit, but everybody would pay the same amount since they're all using the same amount of water without, unless you're talking about a huge, there's only how many of those people out there are using 40,000 gallons, um, except for the major the village. Food, that's just a tier. But, but how, how many of them are? Okay, can, can I ask all of you one question? If somebody living in an apartment uses 10,000 ga gallons of water and somebody in a resident uses 10,000 ga gallons of water, do you both agree that they should be paying the same amount for water? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so, so this $8 was to neutralize so it to make it yeah. equal what Absolutely. everyone's paying right, in the borough. Next, next and basically what Jeff is showing in his four <laughs> diagrams, or three diagrams, I'm sorry, basically give or take three or four dollars one way or the other because some of them are cheaper for apartments some of them is uh, I think the worst case scenario is is um, a dollar more for apartment this was designed to make everyone equal in the re in the borough residents versus apartment dwellers but apartment dwellers would uh, when you're talking about 40,000 gallons of water what is the average um, apartment really using? Are they using 10,000 or do you not get to that and then you just get screwed over with the $8 fee? Because right. you're not at that level. The, you're, you're, you're misunderstanding what the 40,000 gallons is. Any water system has a tiered rate structure. The 40,000 gallons is meant to capture basically most residences, a family of four say, and obviously it depends on who, who you are, but a normal home uses about 15,000 gallons, 10 to 15,000 gallons per quarter. That, that's kind of the standard. But the 40,000, the reason why it was set that way was so that it could capture all of the residential usage and then once you got into those upper ranges, the 100,000, the 500,000, the over 5 million numbers, that's meant to address the really high users that like Cintas Laundry, and the right. and the and the, the high school that use you know right, six, seven million, million gallons of water because there is that theory that you know in those large numbers there ought to be some uh, discount and so the the whole purpose for the borough council passing this rate structure was to try to keep the costs as low as possible. And so I can tell you that, and I, I didn't have time to redo, it's kind of a sidelight to this, but we are the second lowest mm -hmm. water provider mm -hmm. in the county. And it ranges all the way from $78 for the first 5000 and 987 per thousand after that, all the way down to Coopersburg, who's a little less than ours, $1.67. But they also build differently, so I think their net result might be a little higher. Even when you look at the charges, the multi-unit service fee, which is very, a very simple thing, it just as Brent said, if you're in an apartment and you use 10,000 gallons of water, and a, and a homeowner uses 10,000 gallons of water, things should, everybody should pay the same. And so it was just simply that balance that council meant to try to do. It was not sliding anybody. It was all an attempt to keep everything cool. as cheaply as possible. And, and, I mean, that was, that's really the logic of it all. There's, there's nothing else more complicated than I that. I mean, committee people, everybody understand the appeal? Yes. Does everybody understand the system it is now? Yes. Is there any interest in switching the system? Why or why not? I think it's fair as it is. Man, I, I think, think it, it, it should, there's no problem with it. And it's been like this since how long, Jeff? Oh six. Five or six. I yeah. think those six was so what six, was it? six or seven years. When we did the, the, like the last race. Um, hmm. I do know, and Jeff can fill you in also, that we have restrained from increasing water rates, even though the sewer, uh, well, water and sewer, <coughs> I should say, but water. Um, there are things that need to be done capital improvements that we need to do that we haven't been doing, but we felt that we shouldn't increase the rates in the, in the eco economic situation. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I know you, you could use more revenue in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we have refrained from doing that. It just as easily could be 
uh, uh, quite uh, a bit uh, higher. Absolutely. And we restrain from doing that. I mean, there's things that we need to do as far as uh, replacing reservoirs. I mean, half million dollar projects. Mm. It's what's like our, our, what's our quarter we bill? It's our typical quarter we bill. Real, real numbers, not examples. May I get in here? Is it wrong? Sure. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tom Costa. I own 52 units in Borough of Mass. Your hypothesis, I have an actual building here in front of me, a 12 unit complex, 92,000 gallons. Based on what you're telling me. I'm sorry, Costa. 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 Oh, he's probably on the list here. No, I'm not. Oh, you're not. Right inside. 92,000 consumption in the quarter. So based on what I'm reading here, I am paying, I have a preferential rate on 50,000 gallons. Correct. It saves me $7.50 for the quarter. Yet I paid ninety six dollars in extra fees. So that is not ninety six in extra fees, meaning the eight dollars per Correct. unit. Correct. And what would that many units pay if they were residents, single residents, higher or lower? Why well, I, I use ninety two thousand gallons. No, I'm. Are, are you what, paying that, John? Tom. Yeah, oh, Tom. Sorry. I, pay. I don't know. You, I don't, you do not I don't pass it on to no, your renters. No. Okay. I have another thing you're saying. So you know, what I'm, John, if I may, no, sure. Okay. So what my point of it is is, if you, the, 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 I think the, the, the issue that John Donches has raised is equitable, fair to charge uh, some kind of different structure for apartment units versus single family homes. I think that's the crux of his argument. And yes, in I th I would agree with him. It's not fair. Could that lead to higher water rates? If they that's will. what the water rates are, that's what the water rates are. And we could eliminate the tiers also. Well, then we'll also like, I'd also like, to like, also, also like to mention, who owns the water meters? Who the owns the meters? The borough. The borough must maintain them. How many? You know how much it costs to replace one? You know how much it costs to replace only one versus 12? You don't have to but replace 12 units. You have to replace one with me for every 12. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. So there, you know, we can go back and forth. I mean, there's ways we can twist and round. From what I'm hearing, the council took it upon themselves several years ago to try to make it equitable. Exactly. And we'll just simply say, I think what I'm hearing today is there's some consideration that hey, this isn't the right, right way to make it equitable. Maybe we should have a flat meter charge for everyone and a consumption charge. I understand for the big guy that's sucking 500,000 gallons or more, we're going to give them some kind of break. But we're all, I mean, I'm only doing 92,000 gallons in 12 units. If the average is 15,000 per residence, 15 times. Yeah, I'm using, that's actually like showing I'm me with a house, I think we have the yard. So okay, there's I'm using 92 for 12, so I'm using one, eight? Yeah. 8,000 gallons. So I think I would like to, I would recommend a, some real numbers sit down and go over it. And rather than emotionally charge, hey, you're ripping me off. We did this, and Craig Neely did that. You know what? Let's, let's, I think it's worth looking at as a as a property owner and the mayor. Uh, your committee can do what you want with the recommendations. I support what John is saying. I think there, it's a valid idea. It's worth looking at calmly, objectively. We don't want. I, I don't want to pay any less than what for water consumption. If I consume, I consume. That's what it is. All right. That's all. All right, Tom. Thank now, you. Thanks, can we can we get to move this forward? Can we get just give me three boroughs: McCunji, Coopersburg, and Northampton, and just find out how they charge, how they actually do it, and <coughs> something to compare it to. That could be found on the web. And and we'll put it we'll put it on the agenda next month. We'll look at other boroughs and see how they charge. Compared to the borough. City downtown does not. I have units in city downtown. They, don't, they charge based on your meter size first, and then it's straight consumption. There is no extra charge. So we'll, we'll get three or four municipalities. We'll look at how they structure it. And I guarantee there's going to be different structure for each one. Yeah. And we'll look at the pros and cons and if this, see if this council wants to change it or not. If it does change, it would result in an increase. That's yes, right. Um, I, I, I can only say that uh, the, the revenue is based on meter charge and flow, and so, you know, if, if, if that same amount of money is necessary, there would have to be some adjustments I would expect. I have a question on this. What you just said, 
kind of doesn't seem to make sense in my mind. You're telling me that since it's equitable, um, that if it was, if you took away the charge and you took away the tier, it would still be equitable. It would still be the same price. You wouldn't have to change it if you charged the same price. Because you're telling me, I mean, that's what your argument was, that the, um, the tenant gets a discounted rate. And so we're just adding $8 so that it's not, you know, it's the same rate. Okay, take away the tier at that point, and I bet you your numbers come out that you don't have to raise the water rate. It's the same thing, because you're telling me if they're going to pay the same amount of money for it, you're going to make actually more money on it if the tenants pay the same without it. And what's your, your name? Fred Bowen. Fred, we will look, we'll look at uh, the other municipalities, see how they have it structured, and we'll go from there. <coughs> Right. Yes, your name? Jeff Lott. Uh, my question would be if the meters themselves are talking about the multiple meters for units. I mean, I only have a two unit, but it would probably cost me a few thousand dollars in running new plumbing lines and stuff to separate what's in a converted home into apartment units. So that would be quite an expense for the owner to have to change everything over and make it work for multiple meters. And, and, and what that was actually is. one one of the things I know that council had spoke about um, when they decided to adopt this. They realized that when you get down towards a single, like a two unit, like you're saying, that if the multi-unit service fee uh, was a big objection or was disliked or you know, whatever you want to say it, that that particular structure was a whole lot more easy to it re to be able to install a separate meter for each unit and then the multi-unit service fee would go away. It's really more the, the ones that have more units that become more more expensive and more problematic. That, that's what I believe what council was discussing when they passed this. Right. Oh, well, going that with other people had touched on also as far as the one meter doing the job. I mean, if they got rid of the tier rates for residential dwellings versus commercial applications, that would pretty much address the whole situation without it, changing it's anything. It's really not the tier rate. It's still, you misunderstand that part of it. It's really more the missing meter charge, the missing money that the borough would obtain from the meter charge. The, the $40,000, 40,000 gallons captures most, most residences the larger units, it does it for 50,000. But you know, the six unit, the, the five unit, the four unit, it, you know, the, the income, the revenue, and the way that the borough can keep the cost as low as possible on the water rate side of it has really nothing to do with the tiers. Uh, it, it really has everything to do with the fact that when you have 10 apartments with only one meter, you're missing nine meter charges that you would have otherwise have gotten with nine homes having the individual meters. And so it's all a revenue thing that just that was needed to put this all together. That, that's really where it's at. All right, but if you only have one meter to maintain, what would you need the other revenue for? I mean, you're using the man what you're saying, so what you just said there really is uh, creating it income is, for nothing. It is <coughs> just a tax, it's just a bill. Chairman, I, I hate to cut you short. Uh, I have a part, a part yeah. come in I gotta get to, and uh, I had to let everyone know that I had to leave at 3.30. We will get that information. We'll move forward with it. It's not just going to get pushed aside. We're going to look at it. And maybe it is switching the tiers or whatever, but we'll look at other municipalities and see where we're at, all right? Thank you for your time. Okay. 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 Uh, anybody else have anything else? Uh, I don't know. Motion to adjourn? Yeah. Second. I'd like to move on to the next month's. Well, it will be on all business now. It will automatically go into all business. Okay. Jared, you look good on that side of the fence. Oh, boy. I like this side better, though. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. I'm lost. Thanks. I'm going to the other fix. I'm going to the other fix. I'll be there, man. Uh, okay.